cataractcoach.com. Effective pupil size for extended depth of focus and monofocal plus IOLs. We know pupil size is important for depth of field. And that depth of field is wider when we have a smaller pupil, much like a camera with a smaller aperture giving us that wide depth of field. The larger pupil is going to give us a narrower depth of field, but of course lets in more light for dim lighting situations. You've all seen patients in your clinic with small pupils and a monofocal lens, and yet they have no need for glasses near or far. What about these extended depth of focus lenses? What is the effect of pupil size? Let's go through them one by one. The Alcon Vividi has a central 2.2 millimeter focusing element, helps to shape that incoming beam. Yeah, you get a wider range, but you do get a loss of contrast. And that's even in the package insert. So if you look at this with a four and a half millimeter pupil and this same Vividi lens, about 25% of the incoming light is gonna go through that central zone. There's less visual range, but you will hit Plano. You'll aim for Plano and you'll get Plano. But now look at the smaller pupil. With a two and a half millimeter pupil, 80% of the incoming light is gonna go through that central zone. You'll get more visual range, but these are the patients, and you've seen it in your own clinic, where they end up myopic. So you may even have to aim for a little bit of hyperopia to achieve a plano or emetropic outcome. The J&J Techno Symphony has diffractive rings for throughout the whole optic, and that gives you a much wider range, but it does cause halo glare and spider webbing. Pupil size with symphony lens, it's much less important because these diffractive rings are throughout the optic, regardless of pupil size, it's still a pretty wide range. In fact, the smaller pupil will probably get a little bit more of a bump of the depth of field because it's a little bit smaller aperture. And of course, these just aim for Plano to get Plano. Now let's talk about the Aptera lens. This is a small aperture lens that does give a wider range but you have loss of light, and that's how the lens works. If you do some simple geometry, you can see on a six millimeter optic, the outer part of that donut's 3.23 millimeters, and the inner smaller opening, which is the new effective pupil size a lot of the time, is 1.36 millimeters. So let me do the math for you. You can see here, when you get to about a four millimeter pupil, you've already lost about half of the incoming light. And if you get to a three millimeter pupil, you've lost about 80% of the incoming light and only about 21% is getting through. So pupil size with the Aptera lens, if you look here with a four and a half millimeter pupil, about 42% of incoming light is lost and you aim for minus 75 to get more range. For the three millimeter pupil, you still have the same refractive target, but look, about 80% of the incoming light is lost. And this is why the package says to put it in the non-dominant eye with the other eye getting a monofocal lens. But finally, what about the Technus Eye Hands? That's a monofocal plus, if you will, but it's still just a monofocal lens. It has a central one millimeter zone of increased power or curvature. It's kind of difficult to see intraoperatively. If you look at the data from j j you can see it takes a little bit of the light energy from the planar emetropic target and brings it down to about one meter. It's a very mild bump, and again, it's one meter away. And now if you look here with a four and a half millimeter pupil, there's not much benefit for the range because only 5% of the incoming light is going through that central zone. With a smaller two and a half millimeter pupil, it's a mild benefit for range because about 16% of the light is going through that central zone. And now surgically, remember that all of these lenses need to be aligned beautifully with the pupil. Centration matters. Here's the end of the case, hydrating up the incision, and we're gonna spend some time aligning the lens using the Purkinje reflexes. There they are, and you can see we wanna get this lens beautifully centered, and you can nudge it there with your BSS cannula so that you have it precisely lined. Again, lining up those two Purkinje images, you can see the central focusing element of that lens is beautifully centered. That's gonna give you optimum performance. Again, regardless of which EDOF lens you use, you really want to sweat the details and get some beautiful centration done for best visual performance for these patients. And there you can see at the end, it looks really good, beautifully aligned with those Purkinje images. So in summary, remember, smaller pupils are always gonna give you a wider depth of field. Whereas larger pupils are gonna let in more light, but of course will have a somewhat narrower depth of field. This is for any lens you use. 
But you also have to take into account when we use these newer design lenses, these extended depth of focus lenses in particular, that we have to change the way we're targeting them for our lens calculations. So you can see here for larger pupils, for the Vividi, aim Plano, for the Symphony also Plano, Aptera, you're gonna aim for minus 75 per their directions. But for smaller pupils, the way it's gonna differ is that Vividi, you need to aim for a little bit of hyperopia to achieve Plano. Otherwise, if you just aim for Plano, you're gonna get a myopic surprise. And we've seen that. For the Symphony, still aim for Plano, and the Aptera, of course, still aim for minus 75. So I encourage you, use all these lenses in your armamentarium, have them all in your toolbox, and give a tailored result to each patient, and of course, set very reasonable expectations. Thank you.